Okay, welcome to electrical machine lectures. Uh, today we are going to start uh, rotating machine. So this is the machines. First is the what is the meaning of machine? Then we will think uh, its construction, its working operation, and all these things. Okay, so machines what do you mean by machines the machines which converts uh, energy from one form to other say uh, first is the machine which converts the electrical energy into the mechanical energy it is called as a motor so broadly the classification of uh, motor is uh, classification of machine is one is motor and second is generator. This is the broad classification. Uh, motor which converts uh, electrical energy into the mechanical energy. Many times we have heard uh, this name. So electrical energy, electrical energy, to mechanical energy. Whereas in the generator, it is mechanical energy, energy to electrical energy, it is called as a generator. This is the broad classification of machines. Uh, now, uh, our topic is DC gen DC machines. So DC machines means which is going to produce the DC supply. The current in the external circuit is unidirectional, that is a DC current. And whereas the machines which act as a motor, again it is going to receive the power from the DC source or direct current source. So this is the DC machines. So it is called as a one is called as a motor and second is called as a generator. So to understand the DC machine, first we will consider as a DC generator. We will start as a DC generator. From DC generator, then we will go to the DC motor and its working operation and so on. So to understand the DC generator, first of all, we to think that the generator which generates electrical energy from the mechanical energy, whatever the mechanical energy is there. Say, for example, uh, this is the primer or it is a turbine. It is a turbine. Turbine is going to rotate with the help of uh, steam. Then it is called as a hydropower, thermal power plant and here it is connected as a generator. So generator whose output is electrical. So it is going to give the output in the form of electrical energy. So it is the electrical output. Whereas the input is a mechanical one. Whereas the mechanical one is the input. Okay. So this is the turbine. So if the turbine is going to rotate with the help of steam, then it is called as a hydro power, thermal power plant. Many times we have heard the word thermal power plants. Means the mechanical energy is received from the steam turbines. Whereas if the turbine is going to rotate with the help of impact of water, then it is called as a hydropower plant, hydropower plant. If the turbine is going to rotate with the help of, instead of using coal, we are using as a, a nuclear material and it produces the heat and steam. Again, the turbine is a steam turbine, but the fuel we are using, instead of coal, we are using the 
uh, nuclear nuclear material, then it is called as a nuclear power plant. Simply, uh, whatever the means by which we are going to rotate the generator, uh, the name of power plant is depend upon the fuel use. So it may be a thermal power plant, hydro power plant, nuclear power plant, wind power plants, diesel generator, diesel means steam. Uh, again, it is going to produce with the IC engine or it may be a, a gas power plant and so on. So this is the generator. It is connected with the turbines. So now how the electrical energy is going to produce? So it is called as a EMF generation. So first is the EMF generations. Already you have learned in the 12th standard or 11th standard Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. It says that whenever the conductor cuts the magnetic field, it induces EMF. Suppose a uh, very simple, this is the one magnet, permanent magnet is there. And this is the second permanent magnet. One is north and second is south pole. So let this is the north pole, this is the south pole. And the magnetic flux, which is created from north and it is terminate toward the south. So this is the direction of magnetic flux. This is the direction of magnetic flux. This is always start or created from the north and terminate toward the south and so on. This is the, which already we know. So we're not going inside this uh, very deep in the, this one. Okay. Let a conductor, one conductor is placed over here and the second conductor is placed in this way. So let this is the conductor A and this is conductor B. Two conductor will make a coil. So one by one, we are going to introduce uh, some terminology. Say this is one conductor, conductor A. So let I will draw here. Let the conductor is A. This conductor is B. So these two conductors, if these two conductors are joined from the back end and the two side is get open, then it is called as a coil. So very simple, coil is made of two conductor. So this is a conductor, two conductor will make a coil. So this is the conductor and these two conductors are connected from the back end and it will make a coil. Let the this coil is going to rotate by some means. It is going to rotate by some means in such a way that the conductor is going to move. This A conductor is going to move over here in this direction. Okay. And the conductor B is, is moving in this direction. What happens? At this position, the direction of magnetic flux, the direction of magnetic flux and moment of conductor is parallel. It means that the cutting of magnetic flux is zero. As soon as the conductor comes here, at this position, at this position, the cutting of magnetic flux is maximum. So here, the cutting of a small distance traveled by the conductor, whereas the magnetic flux cut by the conductor is very large. And similarly, when the conductor comes here, the cutting of magnetic flux is start decreasing and becomes zero because the cutting of the moment of the conductor and the moment of the magnetic flux in the same direction. Let this is zero angle. Okay, and this is say 90 degree, this is 180 degree, 270 and again 0 or 360 degree. So under such condition, the EMF induced in the conductor as per the Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction, it says that the magnitude of EMF induced is equal to 
minus n d phi by dt. So just forget the num n over here. So it is only the d phi by dt. That is the rate of change of flux linkages or the conductor cuts the magnetic flux. So there is a linkage of magnetic flux and where n is the number of conductor. So the magnitude of EMF induced is equal to minus n d phi by dt, whatever the rate of change of magnetic flux. More the rate of change of magnetic flux, more will be the EMF. And large the number of conductors, large will be the EMF induced. So if we plot the curve in such a way that the moment of conductor and magnitude of EMF induced, say this is 0 degree, this is 90, this is 180, position of the one conductor, 270 degree and say 360 degree or it is a 0, again it's come to the 0. Moment. So here the EMF induced is gone increasing because the rate of change of flux linkage is more and now they start decreasing. So it can be said that this is the EMF induced in this position, the large will be EMF induced. Here the maximum, it become maximum at 90 degree. And again, it is gone decreasing. So it will form a one positive half cycle. Now, the direction of if EMF induced, direction of direction of EMF induced is given by filming right hand rule. Means if you stretch the finger in such a way that your first finger, second finger and thumb, all three mutually 90 degree to each other, the first finger shows the direction of magnetic flux whereas the second finger gives the direction of EMF and thumb gives the direction of rotation direction of rotation, isn't it? So if you stretch your right hand in such a way that the first finger shows the direction of magnetic flux, thumb shows the direction of rotation, thumb shows the direction of rotation, then your first finger, your, uh, your second finger gives the EMF direction of EMF induced. So it will give the direction of EMF induced in this way. How it will? I just, this is the direction of EMF induced. Let, uh, this is the arrow. This is the arrow. And this is the point side of the arrow. And this is the back side. So if the arrow toward us, we will show, we will see in this way. Means we can see the view of the arrow in this way. Whereas if the arrow is going away, then the we can see this is the cross. So this is dot and this is cross. So if you straight the right hand fingers in such a way that the first finger shows the direction of uh, magnetic flux, thumb shows the direction of rotation, we will find this is the current is inside the screen. So it is from away. So say this is the positive direction. Now when the same conductor or this conductor, conductor B or the same conductor A comes over here, when it comes here, here the direction of magnetic flux is as it is, whereas the direction of rotation is opposite. So we will find the conductor EMF is quite opposite. 
with the previous case. So at under such condition, the direction of rotation changes to the conductor. The EMF induced is opposite and it can be drawn like this. So this is the positive half cycle and this is negative half cycle. So this is the maximum EMF induced. It is the maximum EMF. And this is the complete cycle. Means when the one conductor completed its first rotation, it will induce EMF, which is not a unidirectional, but it is a sinusoidal waveform or it is a AC one. So it means that whatever the EMF induced in the conductor by dynamically EMF induce. So dynamically EMF induced induced is always alternate. Means the whatever the EMF induced with the help of dynamical dynamically means the Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. One is the statically EMF induced, which we have learned in the transformer, and dynamically EMF induced it is in the generator. So the dynamic diamond uh, dynamically EMF induced is always alternating, but our topic is the DC generator. Our topic is DC generator. So it means that we want unidirectional current instead of negative half cycle. This is negative half cycle and this is positive half cycle. We want only positive half cycle. Means in the external circuit. What do you mean by external circuit? Say this is the generator. Some This is the generator somewhere. And under such condition, we want in the external circuit this let this is the lamp is there this is the lamp is there and we want the current should be only one direction so it is called as a dc source or dc current isn't it only one direction whereas in the alternating in positive half cycle that current direction is positive in the say positive direction in the negative half cycle the current will be in the opposite direction, isn't it? So we have to make some external arrangement to obtain only the positive half cycle in the external circuit. Then it is called as a DC generator. So now to make the generator, it is necessary to have a magnet, permanent magnet. Yes, this is the permanent magnet. And some coil, number of coil, which is going to rotate under the influence of magnetic field, isn't it? So definitely with the this primary discussion, it is quite clear that the DC generator, DC generator should have major two part. One is a stator, which is a stationary, and second is rotor, which is free to rotate under the influence of magnetic field. So one is the stator, which is the stationary part. And second is the part, which is free to rotate under the influence of magnetic field, isn't it? So this is simple uh, two pole generator and only one conductor, two conductors, which will make a one coil is rotating under the influence of magnetic field. But let this EMF induced in the one conductor is one volt and in the second conductor is one volt. So it is inducing one volt. This also inducing one volt. So the total voltage across the terminal, total voltage across this terminal is only two. But for our practical application, we need different voltages in the different application it may be a 220 volt it may be a 400 volt it may be a 600 volt as per the application or say 500 volt and so on 
as per the application. So it means that either we have to increase the speed of rotation because the EMF induced is directly proportional to d5 by dt, that is the rate of change of flux linkages. And it is definitely it is dependent upon the speed at which the conductor is going to rotate under the influence of magnetic field. Or we have to connect the number of conductors in series or in parallel to obtain the required amount of voltage and required amount of current. Okay. So this coil is over the rotor. And whereas this magnet under the stationary field or a stationary part, then it will be the state, isn't it? So for that purpose, we try to develop a DC machine, that part of the DC machine. Okay. So that uh, this is the Let, let this is the some we are going to develop the one by one part of the machine say this is the cross section view of machine here there should be a some magnet one magnet and this is the second magnet okay now but this magnet and should be in such a way that it should produce the uniform magnetic field over the periphery of coil. So we will have a, some kind of construction. Say this is the, we will make such construction so that the magnetic flux is going to spread over the large area and inside this one inside this one we will have rotating part so this is the rotor okay so this is rotor and this is a stator so here the number of conductors are there okay there are a number of conductors and these number of conductors may be connected in series and parallel. But in the practical field or practical, say, uh, generator, only one, two poles is not sufficient. So we will have, again, there is a large number of poles are there. So this is maybe a four pole, it may be a, so this is called as a pole. So this is called as a pole, which is the responsibility of pole is to produce the magnetic flux, isn't it? So this is North Pole, this is South Pole, this is North Pole, this is South Pole, isn't it? Whereas the casing or outer part, which supports the stationary part, that is a pole, as well as the shaft of the rotor, it is called as a yoke. Yoke serves two purposes. One is to provide the support and uh, say provide some protection toward the dust and dirt. And it also carries the magnetic flux. So whatever the magnetic flux created by North Pole, it terminates toward the South Pole and so on. So it will carry the magnetic flux and it also carries the whole stationary and rotating part of the machine, isn't it? So this is the yoke. Okay. Now the structure over which we will place the number of conductor, this is called as a armature. This is called as a armature. And the conductors, these conductor is called as a armature. 
one and two. So there are a large number of conductors placed over the uh, armature. So what is the armature? Armature is a such type of construction we will consider. This is just like a cylindrical one. Over this one, we will make some grooves. Means here we will make some grooves over the periphery of rotor, periphery of this structure. And these grooves are there. Over these grooves, we will place the number of conductors. Say, we will placing the conductor over here. Okay. This is the number of conduct conductor from the back side and it comes here. Okay. Second conductor, again it comes here. Third conductor and so on. Isn't it? So, number of coils which we have considered. One conductor, second conductor, it is joined from the back end and now it is producing the voltage. Suppose this coil is producing 2 volt. If one more coil is connected, say this is one conductor, this is second conductor of first coil, it is joined together. Now, it is connected with the second, third conductor, which is joined from the back side and so on. So here it is producing the voltage of 2 volt. This is 2 volt. This is 2 volt. And now the addition of these 2 volt will be the 4 volt. Means it is quite clear. If you connect the large number of conductors in such a way, in series which each other, this is one volt, this is one volt, this is one volt and so on. So this is positive side, this is negative. It is connected to opposite to each other like a battery cell. So the total voltage is four. So if we want 200 volt, so we have to connect the 200 conductors R in series. So this is connect, this is tall or this is placed over this structure and it is called as an armature. So armature carries the winding that is called as an armature winding. Now one more thing, when the EMF induced in the DC generator, basically EMF induced is always alternating. And when this alternating voltage or alternating uh, su supply over the this structure, which is made up of magnetic material, which is made up of magnetic material, magnetic material, which is a conducting one, it induces EMF and current is going to flow because it does not find any external path. So in the form of eddies, in the solid material, the current is going to flow in the form of eddies. Therefore, it is called as a eddy current. It produces eddy EMF or eddy current. Therefore, to avoid this eddy current and eddy current losses, which we'll learn one by one, the structure, silicon structure or magnetic material structure is laminated. Just you remember the word laminated. Isn't it? So we will see one by one. So this is the DC generator, which having armature, armature winding, field, this is the permanent magnet, but in the permanent magnet, the difficulty is that because of the constant magnetic flux, it is not possible to control the voltage. So instead of permanent magnet, we can make it a uh, electromagnet. So this is the coil over which again, this is the magnetic material and the winding is placed over the coil uh, or this is magnetic material and therefore the name become it is a field coil or field winding so it is a field winding what is field winding say this is the magnetic material okay this is a piece of magnetic material over which we have wound there is a number of turns over the magnetic material and it is energized with the DC source, external DC source. As soon as the current flows, as per the 
thumb rule if you hold the coil in such a way that your finger shows the direction of current as per the direction of winding then thumb shows the direction of magnetic flux so this is the suppose this is the direction of holding the coil in such a way that by the right hand so this thumb direction shows the north pole and this this end shows the this end will be the south pole isn't it so by controlling this current it is possible to control the magnetic flux hence in the practical dc generator we are not using the permanent magnet instead of we are using the electromagnet and with the help of electromagnet it is possible to control the current and that winding that winding is called as a field magnet isn't it so what are the different part of the dc generator one is the yoke second is the pole okay pole winding or field winding is there armature armature winding isn't it and this is called as a pole shoes it is a call as a pole shoes what is the function of pole shoes the function of pole shoes is to spread the magnetic flux equally over the periphery of armature or equally periphery of the rotor isn't it this is yoke and so on so this is some part of the dc generator and the basic uh, of the dc generator which we have learned in the next lecture we will see the detailed construction of dc generator and will move further for the operation of DC generator.